I'm Jenny Powers. My story begins when three of my favorite things came together. Girl Scouts, bargains, and New York City. So you can imagine how excited I was to find $9 round trip tickets for 25 to, from Holyoke to New York City. When I got to the bus stop at 6 a.m., all those little shining second grade faces were so excited. Only one of the girls had been to New York City before since her dad and I are museum lovers. And of course, we had a few chaperones and other girls, older girls tagging along with us. So a good Girl Scout should be ready for adventure. She should be cheerful in the face of, of adversity. And we arrived, got off the bus, onto the subway to our first stop, which was the Girl Scouts National Headquarters right on Fifth Avenue. You could see vintage uniforms, the original Girl Scout cookie boxes. And you could pick up a phone and you could hear how Juliet Gordon Lowe started the organization in 1912 in Savannah, Georgia. We left there and marched through the streets, the girls singing call and response songs in their little brown uniforms, just perfect. Our next stop was Liberty Island, where the girls took turns standing tall with their fists in the air, emulating the statue enough to soften and inspire patriotism in the very hardest of hearts. We had planned a fairly short day because they were still in second grade, so it was time to head back to the bus. This is when our problems really started. So one of the older tagalongs had broken her leg and was in a wheelchair. And if you haven't ridden the subway and the ferry with a girl in a wheelchair, it's a challenge. Then we also hadn't planned to stop at Ellis Island, but we didn't realize how long it would take for all of those passengers to get off the ferry there and then all of those people to get on the ferry there. So by the time we were getting closer to that subway station to get back to the bus stop, we thought, okay, let's hustle. We hustled those girls down to the South Street station, got them all on the subway, and then we sat, we sat, Subways run on a schedule, and this one wasn't leaving till it was time. About halfway there to that bus stop, all the moms were looking at our watches saying, this is going to be tight, this is going to be tight. We got one of the moms who runs famously in the St. Patrick's Day road race to run ahead and make sure she held the bus. And then I said, okay, girls, let's go. And we ran up those, step, those steps. Hopefully, the girl in the wheelchair and her mom were behind us. And we were flying down the street. And if that bus driver would have gone like this, he would have seen half his prepaid passengers running toward him, waving their arms. But alas, he did not. And only the mom, who was a runner, got to see the bus drive away. I blame myself. Only one kid cried. Mine. <laughs> so I passed her off. I tried to make arrangements. There were only 26 standby tickets left, which ruined the bargain, because I figured I'd better get those kids home. They got to have their first slice of New York pizza, so they were happy. Then we went over to Herald Square, where some of the girls got to shop in the largest department store in the world. Macy's right there. Then little things started coming out. Polly Pockets, Uno cards, things they had brought to entertain themselves on the bus. Soon the girls were saying, this is awesome. We got extra time in New York City. By the time it was time to go back to the bus, even the moms were saying it was great. So we got to that bus stop early. <laughs> It was over some pretty sketchy train tracks, and it was filled with vermin. However, this opportunity to face a challenge and do it successfully came in helpful when just last year, on our pilgrimage to Savannah to see Juliet Gordon Lowe's home, our flight got canceled. <laughs> but we talked about it that night, and we remembered and one of the girls sighed happily and said, Jenny, 
Remember when we got to go to New York City and see those rats? <laughs> Thank you. 